Hello and welcome to the Internal Medicine Board Review Series. Um, basically, we're going to talk about uh, we are talking about cardiology, and uh, today the topic is asymptomatic aortic stenosis evaluation. And the rationale for treated, or maybe maybe we'll try to find a solution for symptomatic aortic stenosis, because we know, guys, there is a kind of symptoms once the aortic stenosis becomes symptomatic. Syncope, angina, and heart failure. This is a kind of comorbidities and basically a cause of death, maybe. So the reason why. We need to decrease the progression. Basically, we need to stop. Uh, we, we need to stop any progression of aortic stenosis. So we need to work on this area. And, re and uh, how how they do that? Uh, we can evaluate by echo, and the frequency uh, and echo will be a topic. We'll discuss that after a few minutes. And also, we need to prevent progression. They studied really. They have a great study. They have big studies about the statin and ENCE inhibitors. If there are any rules of studying ACE inhibitor in asymptomatic aortic stenosis, and finally we're gonna talk about if there is any comorbidity like hypertension need to treat it, coronary artery disease need to treat it, and if there is any antibiotic prophylaxis in case of symptomatic aortic stenosis. So basically this is the first introduction slide for aortic stenosis. Now the second slide, which basically some of echo or cath findings, first you need to know when you will do echo for aortic stenosis, first the orifice. Sorry, the aortic orifice surface area is usually 3 to 4 centimeters. Okay, this is the normal. 3 to 4 centimeters. It's usual if it is less than 1, this is really severe. If it is less than 1, usually this is really severe, and we'll talk about that. Second, in cath, if you remember in physiology, you have ventricular pressure and you have aortic pressure. And the gradient between aortic pressure and ventricular pressure is usually less than 5. Usually less than 5. So when you have stenosis, basically, you have obstruction at the ventricular level, or the aortic level, sorry. So the ventricular pressure will just build up, will be more than 60. And the aortic pressure will be less, right? And that's, that's what we call a gradient. So the more the gradient, the more severe. Echo Doppler, there is a jet velocity, which is 2. And this is a velocity, basically, blood flow through the narrow orifice, through the orifice. If the orifice is low, basically, the velocity will be increased. So if you will see the velocity 3 or maybe 4, that indicate also severity. We will talk about these numbers. Finally, you can assess lead ventricular function if it is dysfunctional or not. This is by echo too. So four parameters, four physiological parameters based on aortic stenosis. Again, aortic orifice area, gradient, Doppler echo, and lead ventricular function. Now for echo, uh, ACC, AHA, uh, valvular guidelines recommend for serial echocardiography for patients with aortic stenosis. Usually, this is, uh, for patients with aortic stenosis in, in 2006. Now, how important this for the question? I'm not sure. But what I'm sure is, I think for mild and severe, you need to know exactly when you will have the next echo for the patient. So, for, let's say the patient is mild. So the patient is mild, and you know these parameters for mild. So basically, you get surface area less than 1.5. This makes sense. The gradient, you will get really 25 gradient. And the velocity, maybe it's less than 3. And go back, and now when you will go to the severe, you will see the, grade, the gradient. Usually, it's more than 40, which is max. And surface area, it's around 4, 1. And the velocity, it's 4. So basically, this is the severe, and this is the mild. And I think it makes sense. The mild needs less frequent. Evaluation than the severe. So basically, this is three to three, five years, and every year or annually, you will do for severe. We'll do annual echo for those patients. Anything in between, you can just go with moderate, right? And anything in between, you can go, you can just go for, with moderate. So I think it's it's not so hard. Um, but I think, guys, you have to memorize these numbers. I'm not sure how much is important for you, but I think you have to memorize. I hear about. Uh, I, I hear this a kind of important. So basically, if you will see really high gradient, this indicates severe, and just go and do another echo for this patient after one. That's it. Now, statin and ACE inhibitor. Really, they talk a lot. I couldn't understand it. I, that's, I, did, I didn't understand maybe uh, in the beginning whether I need to give a patient a statin or ACE inhibitor if he's asymptomatic or not. Really. There are a lot of articles, a lot of things. So, uh, you know, I just, I just put it down here again. So what they said, statin conclusion, this is just a conclusion of the study. The effect, although the studies are different, because they get, because, uh, because they get either mild or maybe, maybe aortic stenosis, maybe asymptomatic sclerosis, but usually it, this study is a kind of, um, maybe I understand, I'm not sure. The effect of statin therapy on a progression of aortic stenosis have been evaluated in a prospective trials, at present, statin therapy solely for aortic sclerosis. This is solely for aortic sclerosis patient. No atherosclerosis, no, uh, no any other 
problems cannot be recommended. So usually they will not recommend it for solely aortic stenosis. The potential effect of therapy earlier in disease, uh, sorry, so I mean the therapy for aortic sclerosis they don't know so far. But if it is aortic stenosis, yeah, this is aortic stenosis, sorry, because I said it's sclerosis. Basically, it's aortic stenosis. So they said if it is aortic stenosis, no, no indication. Now, how about if the patient have aortic sclerosis early in the course of disease? Does those patient, I mean, does we give, do we give those patients statin or ACE? They said has not been evaluated. I'm not sure so far. I'm not sure we can. I'm not sure. I haven't heard aortic sclerosis. They give them statin. I'm, uh, maybe we need to ask more. A statin led to significant, look, this is a kind of another study in mild patient. A statin leads to significant reduction mortality and also saw the progression of aortic stenosis and an effect that was not statically, not statistically significant with ACE treatment. And I think they made this study on mild aortic stenosis patient, not on asymptomatic patient. So far, what I understand, maybe I will update this slide, there is no indications of a statin and ACE. Usually they really make a lot of studies about statin and ACE, but so far there is no indication of statin as in asymptomatic aortic stenosis. Okay. Now more. Treatment, if any comorbidity. If the patient have endocarditis, thanks for the new guidelines because there is no prophylaxis. Well, really I love the new guidelines for endo endocarditis because it's very easy. It's very, very easy. You know, all of that. Uh, mitral valve prolapse with the murmur, mitral valve prolapse without murmur, these stuff, they just cancel it. Really, now, no prophylaxis for all of them. Now, prophylaxis is just for, so basically not for aortic stenosis. Now, if the patient have hypertension, what are you going to do? Uh, guys, you have to remember, the patient is already aortic stenosis, and now the patient got another problem, which is hypertension, right? So basically now you are dealing with two problems. So what we have? We have afterload problem, sorry. We have after double load basically. You have double load, so the afterload will increase. Here there is a kind of, here you can use as uh, ACE inhibitor. But remember you are using ACE inhibitor not to decrease the progression because you have already, here you have already, here you have, uh, sorry, you have, still you have aortic sclerosis. It's not to decrease the progression of aortic sclerosis solely. It is, it is due to, decrease the afterload. I mean, the idea here to you need to decrease the after. You need, you don't need double load on this half. Okay? So to decrease the afterload. Nifidipine, or sorry, I think I'm low dipine and dilzin, calcium channel blockers is also a rule here. Diuretics? No. The heart is already small, and the heart is already, the heart is already small, and the heart is already a kind of stiff and non-compliant. So now we will decrease the preload for this patient. What are you gonna have? You don't have, really your heart is small. I mean, the heart of the patient is already small and the heart is already non-compliant. And now you decrease the preload by diuretics. So what are you going to have? Decrease cardiac output. No lasix. They said you can use it cautiously, but usually not to prefer to use it in aortic stenosis patients. So I think this is a kind of interesting topic or a kind of interesting kind of questions. They love ACE. They tried to make ACE the slow progression and they failed. They couldn't make it in a slow progression. They failed. So that's why they, what they said, they said, okay, let's, let's, let's prescribe ACE if the patient is hypertension. That's surprising me. I think most of the patient aortic stenosis maybe have hypertension, right? I'm not sure how much, but I think it's a good percent of aortic stenosis patient maybe have a hypertension too. So those patients are a good candidate for ACE inhibitor. Okay. Thank you.